part 3 explains the saturated reactor and thyristor controlled reactor. So let us first of all understand saturated reactor. It is also referred as SR compensator. So the saturated reactor compensator has an inbuilt voltage control capability. It directly responds to the variations in the terminal voltage and does not use any thyristor switches or external control for the voltage regulation. So in short, the saturated reactor compensator is used to control the voltage at the point of connection. Saturated reactor is a shunt connected compensator. It is connected in shunt manner with the transmission line. So if we look at the line diagram of saturated reactor, that apart from the saturated reactor, there are many equipments. I am going to explain the necessity as well as the functions done by all the equipments subsequently. Side by side, I am going to explain the VI characteristics of saturated reactor. As mentioned in this point, the saturated reactor does not contain any type of power electronic component as well as it does not have any kind of external control. This is how we symbolically represent the saturated reactor. So this one is the high voltage bus and this one is the medium voltage bus. So the saturated reactor is connected to the main bus via this portion. And this portion contains the coupling transformer and series capacitor with the damping filter. And the task of this saturated reactor is to control the voltage at this point of the system. In extra high voltage applications, saturated reactor compensators are connected to the transmission system buses by means of a coupling transformer. As I said, that saturated reactor is connected to the main bus via this coupling transformer. And in the VI characteristic, on the x-axis, the current passing through the saturated reactor and on the x-axis, the voltage across the saturated reactor. So the relation between the voltage across the component and current through the component is shown over here. In this VI characteristic, the right side part is the inductive portion and the left side part is capacitive portion. The effective reactance corresponding to the slope of saturation characteristic of the saturated reactor varies from 8 to 15 percentage on its own rating and which is responsible to the residual inductance of the saturated ion. If you closely observe this VI characteristic, then as the current increases, the voltage also increases by the slight magnitude. But in the system, we need the flat voltage profile, which means that any change in the current should not cause any change over the voltage. But residual inductance present into this saturated reactor causes the slight variation in the voltage and because of that we get slope in this voltage profile and this slope may vary from 8 to 15 percentage and that is not acceptable. So for the voltage regulation this slope needs to be reduced to 3 to 5 percentage. This curve is corresponding to when only the saturated reactor is present. So the slope is more and to reduce this slope and to modify the characteristic like this, we need the slope correcting capacitor. Actually, there are two ways we can reduce this slope. The first one, as I said, we need the slope correcting capacitor and the second way to modify the construction of the saturated reactor. So the treble tripler reactor kind of saturated reactor compensator could be used to minimize this slope but the design of this treble tripler reactor is difficult as well as it is very costly. Hence, the slope correcting capacitor option is preferred. 
because of the expense in achieving this slope reduction by improving the reactor design a slope correcting capacitor is installed in series with this saturated reactor saturated reactor that is inductive in nature and in series with that we are connecting the capacitor for the correction of the slope so l and c these two components come in series manner and there is a possibility of the resonance so to prevent the occurrence of sub harmonic oscillations from the interaction of the slope correcting capacitor the saturated reactor and the network reactants especially in the weak ac system invariably a damping filter is provided across this slope correcting capacitor so this is how by connecting a damping filter across the capacitor we can avoid the occurrence of sub harmonic oscillations occasionally a capacitor with an associated filter may be installed in series with the coupling transformer to offset its reactance and consequently improve the voltage regulation at the hv bus in ideal condition we consider that there is no effect caused by this coupling transformer but in actual the transformer is inductive in nature so to couple this medium voltage bus with the high voltage bus we need the transformer so practically we have to consider the reactants offered by this coupling component and we have to offset that inductive reactants and for that the capacitor is connected in series with the coupling transformer so once again l and c these two components come together and again there is a possibility of the resonance so to avoid the resonance a damping filter is connected across the capacitor so the connection of the shunt capacitor this one the connection of the shunt capacitor extends the range of the continuously controllable volt ampere reactives to the leading power factor range which is this capacitive portion in short while doing the reactive compensation in this transmission system the excessive amount of the reactive power can be observed with the help of this inductive element saturated reactor but if this transmission system demands the reactive power then that demand of the reactive power can be fulfilled by this shunt capacitor branch so this is how so this is how we can do the reactive power compensation with the extended range capacitive range as well as the inductive range the biasing shunt capacitor is equipped with these small tuning inductors to provide filtering of the remnant harmonics generated by the saturated reactor so the task of this tuning inductor which is connected in series with the shunt capacitor is to eliminate remnant harmonic produced by this saturated reactor these inductors are designed to prevent the possibility of the resonance with the system impedance so let us summarize the saturated reactor this equipment is the saturated reactor which does the reactive power compensation in the transmission system as well as the control the voltage of the line at the point of connection but to connect this saturated reactor to the high voltage bus we need the coupling transformer to offset the inductive reactance offered by this transformer we should connect the capacitor in series with that and to avoid the possible resonance which may be produced by the interaction of l and c we need the damping filter the residual inductance of the saturated reactor may modify the voltage profile of vi characteristic of the saturated reactor but to minimize the voltage variation we have to reduce the slope in the vi characteristic and for that we need the slope correcting capacitor once again to prevent the possible oscillations because of interaction of this reactor and the capacitor damping filter is required to extend the reactive power compensation range in the capacitive portion we connect the shunt capacitor with small tuning filter to eliminate the harmonics produced by the saturated reactor so this is about the saturated reactor and the vi characteristic of sr compensator moving ahead 
Thyristor controlled reactor. So this is the line diagram of TCR, and this is the first power electronics component based fax controller, and which is type of shunt connected controller. So a shunt connected thyristor controlled inductor whose effective reactance is varied in a continuous manner by partial conduction control of the thyristor valve. TCR is a subset of SVC in which the conduction time and hence the current in the shunt reactor is controlled by a thyristor based AC switch with the firing angle control. A basic single phase TCR comprises an anti parallel connected thyristor valves T1 and T2 in series with the linear air core reactor. The anti parallel connected thyristor pair acts like a bi directional switch with thyristor T1 conducting in positive half cycle of the AC supply and thyristor valve T2 conducting in the negative half cycle of the supply voltage. So the controllable range of TCR firing angle alpha extends from 90 degree to 180 degree. And these are the corresponding waveforms of this TCR. The first is current through the thyristor control reactor. Second is the voltage across TCR. And the third is voltage across the inductor for different magnitude of the firing angle alpha. This one is for alpha is equal to 105 degree and this is for alpha is equal to 150 degree. The reason for the firing angle range starting with 90 degree is in the construction of thyristor controlled reactor, the inductor L is connected in series with the anti parallel connected thyristor pair. So we know that this compensator is completely inductive in nature. So the current through the TCR lags behind the voltage by 90 degree and because of that the firing angle range starts from the 90 degree. So when the firing angle alpha is kept 90 degree, the full thyristor conduction with a continuous sinusoidal current flow in TCR. That means if thyristor 1 is fired at alpha is equal to 90 degree and thyristor T2 is fired at 180 plus 90 degree, then that antiparallel connected thyristor pair behaves as a short circuit element completely on switch. The current through the TCR is sinusoidal in nature. There is no discontinuity present when the firing angle alpha is equal to 90 degree. But as the firing angle alpha is varied from 90 degree close to 180 degree, the current flows in the form of discontinuous pulses symmetrically located in the positive and the negative half cycles. That can be understood by observing these two sets of waveform. The first one is corresponding to alpha is equal to 105 degree which is near to 90 degree and second is for alpha is equal to 150 degree which is near to 180 degree. So moving from 90 degree to 180 degree the current becomes more and more discontinuous. We get two pulses per cycle. One pulse is in the positive half cycle. Second pulse is in the negative half cycle. But as the firing angle alpha increases the discontinuity increases and the magnitude of the current decreases. So as I explained earlier that thyristor controlled reactor is a shunt connected controller and the shunt connected fax controller is used to inject the current in the system at the point of connection and by controlling the firing angle alpha of the thyristors used in the construction of TCR we can control the magnitude of the injected current.